balance between kick and bass is not right. So it's just the bass is too loud. I can hear it too. It's just not, it's, you know, it's not the right groove. Uh, so I would go and, um, well, let's just lower the, uh, or let's just lower the, uh, the sub bass first. Around this much. And then for the side chain, you can also see that, for example, in this area here, yeah, it's the setting is just it's a bit too soft because here it gets too loud together. How the the way the kick is blending into the sub bass right here is a bit too much of a resonance. So I would make it steeper. Maybe even add a second additional point to make sure that in this beginning part it's really ducking down fully and not releasing too early. That's much better. This star starts to look very nice now. Okay, like this is a good balance. But there is this issue here still. And you can also see it already in the waveform of the original sub bass. You see that this second note here and the fourth one, they are too loud. It's just not, or it's just, it's not the loudness, it's the energy that they, that they have in total. Because if you remember uh, when I showed you the MIDI in, that pro in, the, in, the, in, the, in the project before, um, I played a second sub note for, for, uh, for this part and for this part as well because it, it goes up to G2, so G2 would be a bit high, so I played an additional G1 note as well to add more fundament to it. But so, because we are playing two sub notes here versus just one sub note here, it's just, this has a lot more energy than this. So we have to find a way to, to balance this. All right, um, now what can we do? There would be, one way would be, just take this, cut it, and pull it down. Try to balance it like this. Up. We could try this. Let's take a listen to it. Let's do this here as well. So I'm just going to pull it down to match it visually, roughly. Not exactly, maybe, but still, you know, there's a bit of a difference. I could, of course, try to match it exactly. But I do feel like you will then start to notice a difference in loudness. Because there is a difference between loudness and energy. And what you see is more the energy difference, so, but you, what you want is an equal balance in loudness. You want to feel like every bass note has the same loudness. All right, so let's, let's pay attention to that. So, it's pretty good, but you, you, if, you, if you pay attention to the analyzer, you can also see that even though here in the waveform it looks like the, f the, the last note is on the same level, but it's, it's actually a bit, a bit lower. Uh, if you pay attention to, to the analyzer, and look at the peaks, where, where the peaks are sitting, where, where are they, at what level are the peaks hitting each, on each note. All right, so pay attention to this. It's all good, but then here, the last one, it's a bit too low. Even though visually here in the waveform, it looks like it's, it's, it's the same. So, yeah, what's, and it also, I can hear that it's not, 
it's not uh, it's a bit too low in, in gain. So all right, so um, let's pull this up a bit more. This is good. Okay, this is good. Um, to me, it sounds like every note has roughly the same uh, loudness level. And uh, let's also again take a look at the uh, sidechain together with the kick. What does it look like now? Okay, it's nice. I think this one we... Uh, let's leave it at this for now. Um, but what we want to do now is clipping and limiting this bass group as I showed you quickly before in the project but now we're going to do it from scratch so you can really follow and uh, see the technique properly. So um, what I would do is after the sidechain I'm going to apply a clipper first to catch the first peaks like shave off the, the more like the top end of, of this bass, all right? Start to control it um, in this manner. So um, standard clip, I showed you this plugin before. It's the best for me. I think this is my favorite for this purpose. Uh, I would keep it at soft clip. I take hard clip only for drums. For anything else, I would always leave it at soft clip. It's, the difference is very, very subtle anyways. So you don't really need to worry about it. Also one thing, by the way, we should take down the master output. Save. Okay, and now I'm gonna look into this window here and This shows you the waveform that's coming through. So it's just showing us the, the whole bass group, the, the waveform of it. And I'm going to start to drag down the clip here, the clipping. This is telling, this is telling the plugin at what level, to, at what threshold, where, uh, where to start the clipping. So when it's at 0 dB, it means that anything that exceeds 0 dB will be shaved off. In, it will be clipped. And clipping is a very different thing than limiting. Uh, maybe I should say a word about that to, to you know, so you understand the difference between clipping and limiting. Um, clipping is really like, it just, it's like a, um, like a scissor, really. It just really cuts it off. It makes sure that nothing exceeds that level. It's very harsh um, and it's a rough process, but uh, it's you know it's immediate and and it makes sure that like I said it doesn't exceed it at all and um, it's it's really good to to catch peaks and and uh, like really sh start shaping your sound in a in an aggressive way it's it's clipping is great for that while on the other hand limiting limiting means um, it's it's a more dynamic process. So it's actually a limiter is like a compressor, but with super super fast attack and release times. Normally, you can also set those though in, in, in uh, all the pretty much all the limiter plugins. Plus, uh, the ratio is like uh, almost infinite to to one. So it also means like the ratio means like it's also trying to. Um, to cut it fully, limit it, as the name says, but with the difference that the attack and release times can be flexible, so it still has, you know, it creates more rounder shapes. So it's not like a scissor, like push, cutting it away, but instead it takes a bit of time, even if it's just 20 milliseconds or something in the audio world, that is a long time. So it can create softer shapes, which then result in um, less distortion, yeah, so a clipper, the downside with the clipper is that if it's too aggressive and you're shaving, you're cutting off too much, then you're going to hear it as digital distortion, which is really ugly. Um, while the limiter is a more safe process, right, and uh, it's not gonna, usually not going to result in this ugly digital distortion so fast. Um, but the downside of it is that it's always trying to compensate for, for things. So, 
Um, one thing that I, an issue that I, I hear with a lot of limiters um, that I'm always very cautious about is uh, it, it starts to eat your base energy because in the limiting process and in trying to compensate for things that has to somewhere take out energy in order to, to achieve that limiting process, you know, and the loudness that you're you're trying to tell the limiter to 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 uh, to achieve, and yeah, then in the end, it's most of the time it's the base energy that it takes out, even if it's just a little bit, um, it can get audible. So that's something that I don't like so much about limiters, and I always watch out for that.